All right, so we so my wonderful audience, it's another day, and you are viewing Issues in Focus with Shibiki Vivos. I trust that you had a wonderful weekend. How was mine? It was very interesting one, but I survived. Today was a pretty rainy day in Trinidad, so the place is practically cool. I know um, some of my guests, they're boiling, but nevertheless, I'm enjoying the cool atmosphere here in Trinidad. So I have uh, two special guests. Some of you may have seen um, Dr. Andre or may have heard from him last Friday. And I'm so happy that he would have consented to be here again today. So before we go any further, let us pray. Great God and eternal Father, we are thankful that you have granted us the other opportunity to see this wonderful Monday as we explore the option of personal health and to hear what our doctors will really have to say today, I pray that you will be with our audience in a special way. May you help them that they'll be able to learn something new. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Remember, I'm telling you, remember, audience, if you're viewing right now, I'm kindly asking you, you can share, um, share this broadcast to your page. There might be someone else who may be touched by the information that will be presented here today. All right. So I'm going to get straight into it. Um, welcome to personal issues day and today we i have two doctors on the platform and they are going to answer well if you don't i have some questions for them and if you have questions for them you can send your questions in and they'll try to see how best they can address your concerns here today on this forum so i have start off i'll go ladies before gents so i have with me dr roshana swears i i just hope i the thing about it when i when i when i looked at Roshan's name is like duck name i remember in secondary school by the way we went to we both attended new amsterdam multilateral school we both finished we graduated the same time i think the last time i saw i saw dr squares <laughs> i am punishing right now to pronounce the name because since school days right through multi i was saying squires which was the incorrect thing and it's like today i was like hi dr squires and then it's like no that's not my name and it reminds me of my name vivos that everywhere i go that people misunderstand my name they can't pronounce it they call me all sort of things so i sort of get accustomed to it so dr squares please accept my apologies in advance when you officially speak to the audience you'll pronounce your name correctly for them so that they can get it right however she has done um general uh, she studied general medicine and of course that's in cuba and um she would have completed that in the year 2016. currently she is attached to the new amsterdam public hospital and very soon she will be specializing in what we call internal medicine don't ask me what is that i mean the years of studies i applaud these doctors for the many many years of studies and um, I mean, six years in Cuba and then to complete four more years um, in, in speciality and then other years in other fields. Man, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. But I'm so happy that she was not on call today so that she could have been on the program because some of my doctor friends, they were on call, so they couldn't be here. But nevertheless, I'm so happy that she's here. So Dr. Roshana, I think I prefer to call you that too, instead of butchering your name welcome to uh it's using focus today and then of course for those individuals who were here on friday when we were dealing with addiction and we were particularly focusing on substance abuse you would have met dr andre hidar and he he's the holder of the bachelor of surgery and bachelor of medicine from the university of guyana and um i just want to remind i just love this part of it he enjoys baking baking audience baking i have to uh, reinforce that because right now i feel like eating a wonderful cake or 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 some nice bread so he enjoys baking teaching and uh, he has a passion for youth work within the sda church so i am so happy that dr andre hidar is here with us today all right i want to take time out to say a special shout out to um brother gavin thomas i'm so happy you're here gavin i miss you for a while on this program i don't know if you were viewing in secret and you didn't allow me to know hi sister tapping sister grace george yes um you're here and uh, miss ashiba posad remember the only how i can know you you you're viewing is if you say hi you say good afternoon just say something i'll know that you're here 
So remember, if you have your questions for, to ask your doctors here today, you can place your questions in the chat section and they will see how best they can address it based on their knowledge that they would have garnered over the years. Hi, Akeem. Welcome to you. All right. Remember to share this to your page too. There might be somebody else who may be who may want to learn something or want some health information, ask the doctors, um, please don't limit their opportunity. Also share it on your Facebook page. So docs, first question I want to ask, um, what is, you know, as doctors, all of us, we have our fears. And, and um, one thing I learned in college, they, they said that teachers, no, doctors bury their mistakes and teachers live with theirs forever. When, <laughs> when, when my lecturer told us that, I was like, wow. And it was a fact, right? So doctors bury their mistake and teachers um, live with it forever. I just hope that none of you um, are burying your mistakes, but I know things happen. So Dr. Um, Dr. Roshana and Dr. Andre, to answer the question, um, what do you think is what is your greatest fear currently being a medical um personnel at the hospital any one of you can answer okay so i think i'll go first good afternoon everyone my name is roshana swears i accept any pronunciation really so <laughs> thank you guys for having me here thank you guys for tuning in and to answer the question, well, my greatest fear as a medical practitioner, I would like to say this is the greatest fear of most doctors, if not if not all doctors, is basically losing the life of a patient. We see patients die in front of us so many times, we do our best, and still the outcome most time than we would like is death. Um, hmm. We risk so much for our patients, Sometimes we put their needs in front of our safety. We take a lot of chances, things that we aren't supposed to do as protocol to protect ourselves. But sometimes we do break protocols, putting ourselves in danger just to save patient lives. So for me, my personal statement is there is nothing more valuable than a human life. So in terms in when time comes to making a decision i always think about the life of the patient how will this influence the person if i'm hungry and there's something i need to do for the patient i think can this wait if it cannot wait you put aside your meals you put aside going home to shower you put aside different you put aside self and you put patients first and I can say this for my colleagues and for the nurses that go above and beyond, especially in this pandemic. We all wish that we can be home with our families and self-quarantine like the rest of the world. But unfortunately, we have to be there. And mm -hmm. if given a choice to stay home or let persons just deal with the effects of COVID on their own, most of us would choose to go to work because death for us is very heartbreaking and it never gets old each person that dies in front of us it's like the first patient all over again so that's it for me wow thank you doc and and um i just want to really piggyback on the point you made concerning you know when when um <clears throat> many times you know we hear reports from doctors i felt so good that you you would have mentioned the nurses you know because Oftentimes we hear, oh, doctors, doctors, but nobody remember the nurses who are there and working just like you. I mean, although you guys have your specialty areas, but I'm so happy that you would have recognized the role of all of those different medical personnel. Wow. So the fear of death. Dr. Andrew, what about you? Hi, Shabiki. Hi, Dr. Oshana. Um, our viewers, good afternoon. All is so nice to be with you all again. I was just there on Friday. I hope that whatever we share this afternoon or whatever we discuss that it be of um i just want to disclaim make a simple disclaimer this afternoon if you're going to ask questions sometimes i might know sometimes i might know a part of it and sometimes i might not know at all so um don't don't think that we're lacking knowledge it's just that nobody knows everything and 
if if it's a case of that then we'll just direct you to where you can get the adequate knowledge yes um coming back to the question pastor shibiki um in terms of greatest fears i don't think i have a fear i think i have many concerns but i don't think i have a fear of working on the job um one of those concerns like doctor would have said is a concern of failure uh, making a preventable mistake. Yeah. Um, we know that the end result of this is, of course, death. But more importantly than um, than concerns and failures is, to me, is how we can overcome these. Uh, and that's the positive light I always look at these things with. And one of the measures that doctors use in the hospital to overcome these concerns is we, we consult with our seniors. So anytime we feel as though we might not know what is happening 100% um, with a patient, we consult with seniors who are more educated and more experienced. The other thing is that as doctors, we always have a mental checklist in our minds. So as we're treating a patient, we're ticking boxes in our heads um, all the time, just so to ensure we don't forget something. Mm -hmm. The other thing I have a concern with is um, uh, inadequacy. Sometimes mm -hmm. even way before I started med school, uh, I, I look at the textbooks and they're so big. If you've seen these medical textbooks, they're huge books, I tell you. And sometimes I, I wonder if I would ever be able to know what is in all of these textbooks. Um, and, and how I, I grew to overcome this, it was by a, um, one sentence that one of our professors in medical school um, told us, you don't need to know every single thing in medicine. You just need to know where to find them. Hmm. So just knowing which textbooks to search um, uh, in a quick time could help you to save a life. Um, just to share two other concerns, just the other day while I was interning at GPHC, I um, got a needle stick injury. So though, that is definitely one of my 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 concerns. I don't fear it. I've overcome the fear, um, but it's it's always at the back of my head, and and I try to take um, I try to be more keen, so as to avoid these. And finally, one of the greatest concerns I have is bringing home an infectious disease to my family. Um, mm -hmm. This I, I don't want to be the person to infect one of my family members with something that I caught at the hospital and brought home. So in order to overcome this, I take extra precautions uh, and observe the protocols. Wow. Thank you very much, Doc. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of concerns that you have there. Well, indeed, um, valuable concerns, <laughs> I must say. Uh, I just want to say welcome to um, Danielle. Of course, if one of my number one um, greatest part of the show, he always shows up on time. Um, we have, um, oh, Jeremiah Trim made a, um, a very nice comment. I like when people could, you know, give their commendations along the way. And he said, Dr. Squires is one of the best young doctor at any hospital. Doc, you know this guy? I Do you know him? Okay, I, I know. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm just seeing the smile, so I, I, I just have to ask that question. All right, great. So I'm, I'm so happy that you're here with us, Jeremiah. So happy to have you here. All right, great. So my second question to you all, um, to you both rather, um, what are some of the health issues? I mean, over the years you've been working in the hospitals and everything, what are some of the, the uh, varying health issues you see people coming? Let's say the top, uh, maybe the top three that you see a whole lot. And if, if there is something that you have to really and truly make knowledgeable to the audience today, what would your top three be? I was thinking I should let the lady go first, but <laughs> she's not <laughs> unmuting, so she's letting me go first. Would you like to go now? I can go. <laughs> All right, great. Go ahead. Okay. So I can go. <laughs> so for the past let me say two years and a half maybe i've been working in the internal medicine department so there our most common illnesses that we would see would be basically your diabetes and your hypertension and one i don't think i would be wrong that those are the two most common chronic illnesses that we have in the elderly population 
from middle age to the elderly population in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then as a result of those two illnesses, diabetes and hypertension, which most times go hand in hand, most times patients have both or sometimes they would have one or the other. So as a result of those two illnesses, you'll have other illnesses related to the heart, related to the brain, such as stroke, related to the kidneys, circulation problem, and these things. So what I always try to make known whenever I give health talks is that it's not just about the elderly folks or the middle-aged folks being aware of these conditions and knowing about these conditions and trying to prevent or get these conditions under control but also for the adolescents the persons in their 20s the persons in their 30s the things we do at these age these different age groups are what influence our health at a later age so if you want to be the person that lives to see 80 90 100 it starts very early you can't do as you please in your 20s in your 30s and feel it in your 40s you're going to all of a sudden make a big change oh, no. yeah. when everything you would have been doing from these ages would have added on would have had some effect to what you to the type of health that you have later on in life so it's important to watch your diet at an early age try to exercise as an, at an early age find an appropriate manner of coping with stress at an early age and not just wait until you are at these older ages where things tend to tell on us more to take all of these seriously we need to start so we need to take it in hand at a young age very early we need to start looking at these things wow thank you so much before dr hidar spoke um speaks rather I am so happy that you, the age group that basically pays attention, we have different age groups. The program is like, well, teenager bears, young adult, adults. We have different persons who would, would view this program. But I just like the fact that you did not just stop at the elderly, but you would have zeroed in on all the adolescents and, and those young people um, for who are viewing uh, uh, Alina Hart, welcome, Okola, welcome, Janessa, Akisha. I hope you guys are paying attention so exercise people i'm feeling proud of myself because i've been exercising well i started back lately <laughs> but the fact of the matter is you are not don't feel as if you're too young and you know one of the things i always tell young people is i can remember when i started exercising going to the gym at school um thank god for the one of the office that i held that um being on the student body we were able to get free gym and um you know while at the gym the guys would ask me what are you doing at the gym you don't need to reduce you have you have good shape i said no i'm not going to the gym to reduce i'm going to the gym because i want to stay healthy and stay active so i i like the fact that you would have dispelled the myths that if you um because you're young you don't need exercise so young people please take these counsels carefully because you're not paying for them don't wait until you have to go and see doc at the hospital either one of these doctors crying out take the counsels now hi um john welcome to you Go, oh, Dr. Um, Hidar, same question. You know, Shibiki, Pastor Shibiki, it's very important that we reiterate often that you don't exercise for a figure, but you exercise to be healthy, right? Yes. Um, many, many of the young people, e even those who may be a slim, um, in slim in figure, they think that they are healthy. That's not so, you know, there's a... Um, there's a girl that runs up the road often um, every afternoon, sometimes in the morning too. And my father would look at her and he'll always say, why is she exercising? Why is she exercising? And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, this mentality needs to change. We can't have people thinking that only fat persons or persons who are overweight, so to say, sorry, um, should exercise. Yeah. For all persons, regardless of age, um, gender, and size, needs to exercise. Uh, in terms of the health issues, what I've noticed is um, I group them into three categories, and some of it uh, will allude to what Dr. Oshana said. The first one I see um, very popular now is mental health. Um, 
uh, during the COVID times and in recent um, months, this has increased. We've been having a lot of patients with anxiety and depressions. Um, also, we see an increment in substance-induced psychosis, those persons that we spoke about on Friday. Um, yeah. They are at historically high levels. Um, and what we need to recognize is that we need to treat these patients emphatically. We need to ensure that we can offer avenues that will be able to um, help them to feel safe and secure and get them the help they need. Um, the other group I want to to uh, speak to is the chronic illnesses, like Dr. Roshan spoke about. These include the um, the high sugar and um, and malignancies, cancers. Um, these is by the day. Every day you get new cases of patients being diagnosed with diabetes and hypertension. Um, and and what's most um, What's most saddening, saddening about this is that these are diseases or conditions that are caused mainly by um, lack of good or lack of control of lifestyle. So things like exercising and nutrition, these um, can easily uh, correct or, or lead you on the path of correction for these diseases. So anything with lifestyle modification will be able to um speak to the chronic diseases and the third category i want to speak about is the infectious disease category lately of course we know that covid is on the rise we have um hiv tb stis and stds uh, these are all very preventable diseases so all i'm going to say about these is to take precautions mm, thank you so much thank you so so if we have to wrap them up, let me see, the mental illnesses, the chronic diseases, and the infectious diseases. And so if, um, let, let me just hope I get it right. So we have, um, well, we know the mental illnesses are broad that a lot of persons are suffering from. Um, then we have diabetes, and um, what's the other one, doc, Dr. Um, Roshan, you mentioned? Hypertension, yeah, high blood pressure. So we have diabetes and hypertension, and then, well, of course, with well, COVID now out. And um, in terms, I just want us to zero in just last time on this particular issue. How many young, for those diseases that you would have mentioned there, both of you, Dr. Um, Squares and um, Dr. Hidar, how many young people have been affected by these diseases over the years that you have noticed? Especially the age, I'm looking at the age group between, let's say, 16 to 35. All right, this is a moment that I love very much that everybody's saying, I wonder who is going to put on the microphone for us. <laughs> All right. So I can't give you exact numbers okay. in terms of the age group, but I can say that alarmingly, these incidents would have been increasing over the years. Like we would be diagnosing persons with hypertension and diabetes, type 2 diabetes, at a much earlier age now than in the past where we would have seen it in like your patients like older than 45 maybe 40 but now we're getting a lot of 30 year olds mm. that are being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes do you have patients a few patients in their 20s that are being diagnosed with hypertension and as a results heart failure which we would normally only see in persons that are much elderly and this is also attributed to the lifestyle that these persons would live and i'm talking mostly about substance abuse especially alcohol abuse in our younger folks that do not deal that instead that do not have an appropriate mechanism of dealing with their stress or, or taking care of their mental health. Yeah. So for that, I would say what I can say for sure with a certainty is that if we compare the figures now with the past, we are seeing a much we're seeing much more cases of these patients diagnosing being diagnosed at a younger age. Wow. So to our young audience viewing, um, I want us to really and truly 
um, dispel the myth that we that because of the fact that you are young means that you cannot because this is what the doctors have been seeing over the years and i really and truly did this program in particular because i really want us to recognize that not because your granny or your mommy or your daddy they seem old right now that you know they are you going to live longer than them no it's time for all of us to take care of our health right so i know dr hidar is ha he's having a bit of technical problems with the internet so as soon as he's back he's going to give us um the answer to the question what i mean because he's working at the Jershon public hospital um and dr swears she's uh, attached to the new amsterdam hospital um so doc how okay dr head are you back great just let me know if you're hearing me clearly All right. Dr. Hedar, are you hearing me? All right, Doc. So um Dr. Squires, while he while he's there getting getting um getting himself organized. So the next question I wanna um I want us to explore. Um how how so important is um is personal health? How important it is. So personal health is very important. When we think of personal health, we think of our mental, physical, and social well-being. Okay. So we need to learn to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others, before we can be even be functional persons in society before we can add to anything else in life we need to make sure that we are okay first if you're physically impaired for whatever reason being a disability or you're hypertensive if you can't get much done you have heart failure you can't have get much done there is only so much you can do really all right so if mentally you're not okay, you cannot take care of others effectively. You might go wrong trying to get your job done, but mm -hmm. in the same time you might take out what you you might be taking out what you would have been experiencing on others. Um so in terms of those things, I would say that okay, we need to always get them in check first not not because it's a selfish thing to do but if we really want to be efficient in society and really add to society we need to take care of ourselves first because yes. when we are well physically socially and mentally well we can do so much and so effectively and then in this time of covid 19 we can see clearly by the numbers who are the persons that are being affected. The persons who have comorbidities, other illnesses, those are the persons who are being affected. So even now as doctors, we are encouraging each other to eat healthier, exercise, and find a, find a way of coping with stress. Mm -hmm. For me, I have I would have started yoga, and that really helps me to relax in the mornings and help me to have a less frustrating day. Um, we can find persons to talk to, not to keep stuff in, so that our body can really be physically prepared. Our immune system can really be up to fight yeah. off this disease. Because if your immune system is weakened, that is what the virus loves, so to say, mm -hmm. right? Those are the persons, if your body would have been fighting different illnesses throughout the years, when it comes to confront the virus, it wouldn't be so strong. And that is why we have our elderly persons, unfortunately, our diabetics or hypertensive, our asthmatic persons who have already had a weakened respiratory system, those are the ones who are being affected mostly. Right now. So, so 
it's very important for us to get our well-being up mm -hmm. to get our physical body up to get our mental strength up so that we can really face this pandemic and survive this pandemic thank you very much doc thank you and um i i want to just be i'll take um dr hedar now but i just want you to ponder on this question in a, in a sense that i know i noticed in guyana um the age group of COVID has been between the ages of 20 and 29 i don't know if my stats are correct at least that's what i'm hearing from over here and um i know in trinidad that wasn't the case at least not to my knowledge but that's the age group uh, many young people would have been affected so i just want you to ponder on the question as to why that may be um the reason um but i'm going to take dr hedar's um responses to the previous questions now dr hedar uh, Becky, are you hearing me yes i'm hearing you now great what was the question sorry okay great why is so personal health important important yeah. for well-being yeah art um ensures and promoting well-being for all ages is important in building prosperous societies that is definitely something i believe um we all know the definition of health according to who way back in 1948 all nurses doctors healthcare workers could um recite this definition from memory for you health is a state of complete uh, physical mental and social well-being not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Um, what I like even more though, is in 1986, WHO made some clarifications to this, um, to this definition. And they, they said- Oh, all right, I don't know. Um, today is Monday and the internet is really, really doing because on Friday we had no is internet issue with, um, with Dr. Andre. I don't know what's happening today. All right, um, Dr. Rashan, and that's why it's important when I have this program, I really don't have one person on the platform because of the fact that just in case, you know, we have internet glitches, um, we can still continue and run the program. So, Andrew will be back just now. Okay, let me see. He is connected back. All right. So, I'm hearing you, Doc. I'm back. I'm sorry. I had to come off my computer because I'm having some internet issues, but praise okay. God, I'm back. All right, great. Um, I, I don't know how much you heard. Up to where did you hear? You heard, you heard. I heard when you said the World Health, I think you can't remember what year, but they would have made some changes to the definition. Clarification. Great. So in 1986, WHO made some um, cl clarifications to that definition, and they added that um, health is a resource uh, for everyday life, not the objective of living. So what mm. they were saying is that health is actually a resource. You don't live to be healthy. You live, um, you'll be healthy and live. Uh, that Brother, before, you, before you go, I just want you to repeat that particular statement. Audience, if you miss anything else, don't miss this statement. Go, go again, Dr. Hedar. So health is a resource for everyday life, not the objective of living. So you don't live to be healthy you be healthy and live oh yeah um when you talk about uh the importance of personal health that actually is an umbrella term for for many other types of health uh such as physical health social health um emotional health financial health and of course we cannot forget spiritual health um a person when you when you speak to physical health is of course the bodies and all the systems and how your heart and kidneys and liver and everything is functioning well when you speak to financial health is how um you manage your money how well you can budget social health is how you interact with others and so on um <laughs> all of these are intertwined in one network so okay. all of them depend on the other as long as you have good physical health, good spiritual health, good mental health, um, all types of health being good, then you can say you are a healthy, wholesome being. 
if of course one drops by it can of course affect the other yeah, yeah. if you think of um a decrement in your physical health maybe having some some chronic disease like um hypertension diabetes pressure sugar uh what this can do is add stress to your body just knowing that you have this disease increases the level of stress so that mm -hmm. decreases your mental health then there's money that you need to spend on doctors decreases your financial health and of course you feel like oh my god why would god do this to me and you start doubting god and you have a lack of faith and that decreases your spiritual health so we see that in order for us to be healthy wholesome beings all of these types of health must be optimal um, and we must work, always work, on ensuring that uh, these health are up to a level that can keep us healthy. Oh, thank you so much. You know, today is the first time I'm here with the financial health because I'm here sitting and I'm like, okay, what is this financial health? I said, let me, let me sit and wait for the explanation. So when you, when you connected the dots, then I realized how important it is. I wonder if I'm suffering from a financial health. In fact, yes, I think I'm suffering from financial health right now. But I'm trying not to let it send me to the hospital or anything <laughs> at this point in time. But I like that. Um, um, Jay, you would have said it. Maybe you want to make a point. It leads to depression. Oh, and um, Aki would have made rightly said that there are many misconceptions on what being healthy actually means. Indeed, so true. I want to say to the audience: remember, if you have, um, if you may have questions. Um, feel free. You can put post your questions in the comment section and the doctors will see how best they can address it. Um, I, I, I just want to let you know I would have started a new a YouTube channel called Issues in Focus with Shibiki Vivals. You can go there. You can subscribe very soon. We will not only be streaming live on Facebook, we will also be streaming live on YouTube. So we'll have both streaming um, occurring at the same time. But in the meantime, I want you to share the link. You can subscribe so we will see how far we can get from there just want to remind you also if you're viewing from my page shibiki vivals you will not be able to make if you make a comment there you ask a question there i will not be able to see your comment the only how like you can actually um i can actually see your comment is by you liking the page issues and focus with shibiki vivals and that's only how you will get the opportunity to comment and that's how i will know exactly you you look into all right great Thank you very much, Doctor. So far, I'm, I'm really and truly enjoying this um, uh, this conversation that we're having. And I want us to touch base on a topic that... Um, hi, Lisa. Welcome to you. Um, a topic that many times uh, people don't want to be real with as it relates to the connection with when it comes to medications over natural remedies. As doctors, I know it's a... For, I, well, Guyana, we're free. I think the Caribbean, we're free to discuss it. But in certain parts of the States, I heard that you can't really talk about natural remedies that much. So doctors today, because we live in a free Guyana, free Caribbean, um, can we discuss this thing when it comes to medication over natural remedies or natural remedies over medication? What's your take? I'm seeing the biggest smiles for this one here. <laughs> um this whole natural remedy thing it's a very broad topic um when i think of natural med remedies i think of alternative medicine okay which is anything away from your tablets and whatever it is that we would prescribe to give you what we would prescribe for your tablets and your injection and these things so there's alternative medicine in terms of your plants, your fruit, your fruits, your different forms of exercise, yoga, massage, acupuncture, and these different things that would be alternative. Um, it's not so much for me, it's not to say that you can't do it and it's better done. It's that you need to take it illness by illness okay and then you compare it there so let's go simple let's say we're talking diabetes and hypertension when people think of natural remedy they would think of drinking some bush or 
you know, some using lime when the pressure high and these things. So for me now, when I have a patient who's newly diagnosed with diabetes or hypertension, we would first say that what's important to control your diabetes and hypertension is your diet and exercise. And for me, that's natural remedies. I like that. Right? And it's important that you maintain normal levels and not just sometimes it's normal and sometimes it's high. So if I have a patient that says to me, doctor, I honestly don't like taking medication and I wouldn't take the medication, great. We can try something else. Let's try your diet and exercise. But if you're going to do this, you need to be very committed to it. And there are some fruits and some vegetables that you can use to control your blood pressure. But if you're going to do this, it means that you need to be testing your blood pressure twice a day at least and every day to make sure that it's actually working not only that it's working when you when you drink when you drink whatever it is or ingest whatever it is right most of our medications would have come from plants they yeah. are just more concentrated and they've been altered a little so that it's more potent and so the duration of it the effects of the duration of it in the body last longer that's basically what it is so now if you're going to tell me you don't want to take the medication fine but if you're not the optimum goal for me i don't care necessarily what you use i just care that your blood pressure and your blood sugar is controlled so whatever it is you are going to use, as long as it's controlling you, goes for you. If exercise works, exercise works. If acupuncture works to take away knee pain, it works. If some ointment or some whatever concoction that your grandmother would have cooked up works for your knee pain, that is wonderful. Because at the end of the day, our medications with aren't without risk. Because when you use certain medication over a long period of time, it's a fact that you will have some some effect later down in the future hmm. right so that's why it's important for us to first of all do whatever we can to delay when we start to develop certain illnesses and you need to know that when we tell you to use a medication it's because the benefits outweigh the risk by far so if you're telling me doctor i don't want to use the medication and i'm insisting that you use it of course you have your right to question yeah you have your right to question and say okay i don't want to do this i want to i don't want to try something else and i'm going to give you all the facts and at the end of this up to you to choose right so if you would have tried something else and it didn't work and i'm telling you you have to use this it means that okay so I'm going to use a common medication that everybody, well, most persons knows, like your diabetics would know about metformin. We know that using metformin for a prolonged period could sometime down the line, could or could not lead to renal failure, kidney failure, right? Oh. But not using metformin and having those elevated blood sugar all the time you will definitely develop kidney failure and at an earlier age you will definitely have a higher risk of developing a heart attack a stroke or blindness at an earlier age so the risk the benefit definitely outweighs the risk so if none of your natural remedies are working because you can't be saying doctor i'm going to be drinking lime water Water to control my pressure. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. You're taking your lime water, you, you're watching your diet, you're watching your exercise, and you're trying to maintain the blood pressure controlled as long as possible. Not you control it in this moment and then in the other moment, it's not. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how I look at natural medicine. It's not that I would be for or against it on a case by case basis disease by mm -hmm. disease person by person basis so that's me i love it i love it i just want to say to persons who are viewing at this point in time 
if you haven't shared this video as yet you are doing the, your your facebook page a great injustice this is this is wealth of knowledge it may prevent somebody from going to the hospital and maybe contracting covid unnecessarily so please people share it so that others can be edified while you are being edified at the same time right so those who are viewing you know yourself please share it on your page all right dr hedar let me hear what you have to say now you know pastor shibiki and this <laughs> i don't know how i feel about natural remedies versus um medications given by a doctor i <laughs> I really don't, um, you know, for thousands of years, people have been using barks and leaves and flowers and um, it appears to be working for them. Uh, if you ask the pharmacist, of course, they will say you should use medications that a doctor prescribed. And if you ask the herbalist, the herbalist <laughs> is going to say, I definitely think you should use natural remedies. So where I draw the line or where, what, what, what I can say or how I can weigh in on this, I, I can't give you definitely what you should or shouldn't use. Okay. But what I can say is that with everything, there's pros and cons. So yes. in terms of weighing in on the natural remedies, what I find happening is that there's a lack of definite and complete information about the compositions of the extracts. Mm -hmm. We don't know. There isn't extensive, extensive research on, um, all the natural remedies that people use when you look at um medications these would have been tested in lots and lots of trials um and we know how they're going to interact with our body systems and so yeah. on um so in terms of a controlled versus an uncontrolled um that is one concern the other one is because they haven't been tested in natural remedies, we don't know toxicities, we don't know how much it will take um, True. To, to cause harm to you. Um, sometimes we just use a, a small amount and it helps us, but we don't know if that was actually the right amount that should be used. We mm -hmm. don't know if it can be used in pregnancy. We don't know if it's going to harm the fetus. Um, these are all downfalls of herbal uh, medicine but of course with natural with um medications dispensed by a, a pharmacist there's always side effects and it's always on the medication label it says it can cause headaches um it can mm -hmm. cause death it can cause overdose all these things so it's totally up to the person you choose um of course as doctors we recommend well, I recommend that you use medications that we prescribe because we like to be in a controlled and we're moving more towards evidence-based medicine. Um, yes. But it's totally up to you. I want to say, though, I came across some interesting facts that there was actually, um, that's why I said for thousands of years, we've been using natural remedies and Doc alluded to this that there are remedies that used to make tablets that we use even on to this day so i just want to share some with the viewers for general knowledge um okay so the first one is the cinchono bark and that was actually used to make quinine which we use to treat malaria now um, okay. the other one is the homemade mold so what happened is long ago people used to um soak bread with water and then the mold would develop and then they would ingest that what what uh, a scientist found is that and this scientist was fleming what he found was that um what happens is not actually the mold but is a byproduct of the mold that um, mm -hmm. kills the bacteria and this was used to develop the penicillin injection um, interesting also, also, the other one I have here is the floral remedy from the foxglove plant. Um, and they said this has been used to make uh, the drug digoxin that we use to treat uh, congestive heart failure, all those cardiac patients. So it's another plant that we got um, the derivative from to make the digoxin. And finally, there are many, many, but aspirin, um, the willow bark and meadow sweet plants. These were used um, to come up and isolate the, the acid, and then we came up with aspirin. Wow. Wow. So thank you both and, for the... And, and before <laughs> go you go, ahead. Um, Pastor Shibiki, 
it is very important that I mention to our viewers that Ezekiel 47, 12 and Revelation 22, 2 tells us that on either side of the banks of the river, there will be trees and these will produce fruits and the leaves shall be used for healing, yeah. right? So I just mm -hmm. got to put that piece of spiritual advice in there. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I, I like the I like both of your explanations and the fact of how you would have weighed in on, the, on that question. And it reminded me um, of someone who would have used, he had cancer, I think, and he would have used sour sap, the sour sap leaf, you know, you boil it and whatever. And he used too much and he almost died. I mean, he's dead now, but he almost died. And they had to rush him to the hospital. So he was focusing so much on the medi on the natural remedies because he doesn't have, of course, as you would have mentioned, there is no study, you know, in-depth research being done on these things. So how do you know what to use and in what quantity? And uh, well, I mean, thank God he, he got to live at least a few more years, I think, after that incident. But of course, please listen to wise counsels, people. You might be able to extend a few years more. All right. Um. I want us to look at the fact of, you know, radiography, um, some persons, they have, they're under the impression that it's extremely harmful. I want you to want to know what's your, what's your fact um, surrounding this? So... Basically, in radiography, what they would use is naturally occurring electromagnetic radiation. Okay. So these are basically different radiation that are already around our environment, just in different concentration in different locations, right? Um, like radiation, like natural medicine, there is benefit and there is risk. But we, again, we say that the benefit outweighs the risk. Okay. Of course, the, the risk with radiation, of course, we try as much as we can to limit exposure to patients, limit the amount of exposure that they have, and we try to protect organs that are more susceptible to damage from radiation when we would give x-rays and stuff. So, which would be mostly like your ovaries, your testicles, and these things we would try to protect. Um, the risk with radiation is more accumulative. Mm -hmm. Red, um, X-rays are considered car carcinogens, which means that they can cause cancer, but it's accumulative. It means that with more X-rays you are exposed to, your risk increases. And even that risk is very small, right? But there is a risk. And it's for this reason when patients come in, patients always want what they want. And if you don't give them what they want, you're a bad doctor. So sometimes we have to settle for it. But at the end of the day, based on our study, we know what's best. Not everything you need an x-ray for that you think you need an x-ray for some persons come they hit the leg or the leg hurting and the first thing they want is an x-ray no based on our experience and our studies we would know when it is necessary to order an x-ray and that is why we don't order it if it's not necessary because sometime along the line you might need more x-ray in your later future in your later days so we don't want to abuse it. It's not just not about not wasting resources, but it's also about protecting the patient. If you I don't agree. need it, we wouldn't give it to you. And if you need it, the benefit outweighs the risk. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because it reminds it reminds me. I can remember I was um a few years back. I I don't know. I know you may not remember that because we were not in the same class. We were in the same grade, but not in the same class. I fell when I was in form two, in two W. Um, your class two T was with two W, right? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I fell. I was doing some silliness and I fell and I hit my back. And um, I can remember walking home from school that day, you know, walking from New Amsterdam multilateral to the stillness blows, right? But it's like, I don't know, it's like sitting down was so uncomfortable. So I thought the best way it was to walk out the pain. 
and I took my precious time. I had another friend there with me and I walked and I never went and checked my back around that period of time. But years later, I started experiencing severe back pain. And when I did, um, I, I can remember going to the hospital and I was explaining to the doctor I'm having back pain. And, you know, he asked when I felt, I said I felt years ago since as, as a teenager. And he said to me, no, we can't, we're not going to give you the x-ray. So I said, why? Why are you not going to give me the x-ray? I really want to know because I've been having these pains for years, but just like I hate going to the hospital. I haven't checked it out, but I think it's about time for it to be checked out. And he refused. He said, no, I'm too young. And he brought in, he said, you, have, you haven't had any children as yet and we don't want to take risks and a whole long explanation. They gave me some medication, it eased. And then years after when I came back to Trinidad here, I came to Trinidad in 2017. And in 2018, it was around uh, April, May, I started experiencing severe back pains all over again. And I went to the hospital again because this time I was like, I don't care what the doctors say. They have to give me an x-ray. I need to see what is happening. And um, when I went and, you know, I explained to them because it was really severe. The doctor looked at me. She said, okay, we don't really like to do x-rays, but let me give you, we're going to do x-ray. And they did it and they recognized that. I can't remember what was the, of course, I usually like to do my research before going to the doctor's. So I have in my head what I think I have, you know, now I'm sure you met with many patients like that, right? And um, when she explained that to me, I said, oh, well, I did some research on it, which says not, nothing too serious or anything. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about it. And it so happened that after that, like, so for some reason, the other pain disappear, all right? But then I realized they, 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 they told me some natural stuff to do. Don't use backpacks. If you use your backpacks, ensure that it's not heavy. And I recognized that during my time at USC coming back, it's like as students, we went back to have a sack bags. So it's like your, your laptops are there, your other books are there, and you just have everything in your have a sack. And I recognize that when I stopped using that, the pains went. And I never again, I got my extra there, still did not really know. She wrote something, but I don't even know what it is directly. But they say it's nothing too serious. So I'm, I'm quite satisfied with that. So doctors, listen to me, viewers. Just listen to your doctors, eh? You might be saving yourself some um some unnecessary expense and time and pain and stress everything in one. Yes, Doctor Hidar, over to you. You know, Pastor Shibiki, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking that this this afternoon we have a panel that um is made up of all country folks, and um, we're all from the east side, which is of course the best side. Um, <laughs> And I, want I just to want to, before you continue, that... some, some of our viewers are international. They were not uh, international persons. You guys will not understand that. All right, let me just tell you, you, you can just, when the program is finished, you can go on the map of Guyana, type in or type in Barbies in um, Google search, and you will, we are all Barbicians for those of you. So when you type in Barbies, you will see exactly where the location is. So we're from different parts of Barbies, but we're Barbicians, proud to. Yes, Andrew, thank you for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> and um, you're one of the, you're the type of patient that really give the doctors a lot of headache. Those persons <laughs> who diagnose themselves and then come for us to diagnose them. And if our diagnosis doesn't match yours, then it's a whole lot of problems. <laughs> I'm just weighing in on this uh, radiation story. So, um, Radiation has been around us throughout our evolution. Um, there, every day, every single day, we are exposed to some sort of radiation, be it if it's from our cell phones or the microwaves, um, radios in our homes. Um, all these things give off a little bit of radiation. Uh, in terms of healthcare workers, though, and patients, um, I could speak for GPHC. I'm not too sure about New Amsterdam Hospital. But I was asking one of my friends who work in radiology at GPHC just this morning, um, what are the risks that um, what are the risks that are involved in in persons working there? And he told me that there's zero to none, and that oh. stunned me. So I asked him, why would you say so? People always run away from X-rays and they hide behind the walls and so. And he told me that um, there's always a method to the madness. There's always something that's working when we can't see it. 
So hmm. in all these X-ray rooms, they were specially made for these X-rays. They have um, a GPH. See, there's uh, when if you ever did an X-ray there, they they position the patient, and then they go behind a wall, and this wall has a lead shield, um, and it's an eight inch thick um solid cast concrete. So you're behind there, and the X-rays they they don't actually reach you, and you see the patient through a window. So um. Before before the commission of any X-ray department, there needs to be there's always testing, um, and of course these these facilities must be up to par before uh, usage. In terms of the patient, um, Dr. Roshan spoke to this. We don't give patients X-rays or fluorescence or CT scans unless they actually need it. Okay. So um, we try to expose the patient as least as possible. To the uh, to radiation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when we when they so the the radiologists in the department they um they have a special thing that they use they call it Alara, which means um as low as reasonably achievable. They they try to uh, give the patient the lowest dose of radiation to achieve the best image to make a diagnosis. So there's always something working for your better interest patients. Everything that is done in the hospital is done with a purpose. Um, and of course, when you want to think, we all know that radiation can cause cancers. Well, high levels of exposure to these radiations yeah. can cause cancers. Um, they can harm the baby in the womb. They can cause death. But of course, it's dose dependent. It's dependent on the amount of time you're exposed to the radiation okay. and if you would have um, gotten a shield protector or not. So there are many, many things. It's just for us to weigh the risk versus the benefits. Okay. I noticed um, Akim has a question here. Um, he's, he's talking about, he was wondering what, what the use of the mobile X-ray machine. Is it the same thing? I know that you guys have seen the question. Um, the use of the mobile X-ray machine. So I'm having a lot of issues with <laughs> with this thing. Anyways, um, yes, it's absolutely the same thing. When you um, okay. use the mobile X-ray machines at GPHC, what they do is they wear shields. Um, it's like a gong they put over themselves, um, the X-ray technicians. Then they ensure that the area is clear. So they don't shoot the X-ray as long as people is around. They, they sound the warning that they're going to take an X-ray. Everybody runs behind a wall or behind um, some door, the farthest possible spot that you can go. And then they shoot the X-ray. Interesting. <laughs> I've, I've never seen that one. I, I think I, I for now I prefer my old method. I hope I don't have to do any more X-ray in my life. Which one is better though? <laughs> it's basically the same thing. It's just different um methodologies. One is mobile and one is stationary. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's the same so thing. yeah, so like for us at New Amsterdam Hospital, we don't have a mobile X-ray, but it would be something that we would be very grateful for because okay. there's some patients that you just cannot move or it's more risky to move them and you also mm. need an image. So in those, it actually makes those conflicting situations a little bit easier. You take the image right where the patient is instead of having to move the patient, think about getting oxygen for the patient or what if the patient crashes in the X-ray room, what are you going to do? There's no medication. so. It's very beneficial to have one. Okay. Okay. Nice. So, Akim, I trust that your question was addressed there. So, we have two more questions before we wrap up this program today. Um, I just want to hear you. I mean, both of you have been frontline workers. I recognize that the, the cases in Guyana would have risen significantly over the past few weeks. Um, for those, you know, constantly people will be checking on me in Trinidad to find out. I just want to let my viewers know I am safe and sung. Um, Trinidad has, I must commend the government. They have since, since COVID hit the nation since in, um, January, they have been sending, doing a lot of press conferences, sending one into the public. And because of that, um, Trinidad has been able to get COVID under control right now. So practically the nation is open back. They want to open school in September fully, but the problem is borders. So we don't know when we'll be home. 
because um, they are scared to open their borders to persons who have not controlled COVID. And that being Guyana, seeing that Guyana has been racing, I mean, Trinidad, there are many flights back and forth from Guyana to Trinidad. So we are here, but I just have to enjoy my stay on tail, I guess. That's all I can say. I'm not allowing that to stress me out to that level. So the question that I want to ask you guys in terms of um, being on frontline workers right now during this COVID period, um, how would that, how has it been for you guys? You know, Shibiki, I'm not currently a frontline worker, but okay. I, I must take this time to big up my frontline workers. They're working hard and they, they deserve all the praise that we can give them. Um, so many, many of my good friends and colleagues back at GPHC are, are working hard. I also applaud all the doctors and nurses the cleaners, the garbage collectors, um, all the radiologists, mm -hmm. the lab techs that are working in all the hospitals throughout this wide nation. I want to give them the praise. I encourage them. I, I, I want to ensure that every day they wake up, they are emboldened um, and they're yeah. energized and encouraged to keep on fighting, um, not for themselves, but for all others around them. Thank I, you I so much, Dr. Them. Peter. Yeah, thank you. Well said. Well said. I love that. Yes, Dr. Roshano. Um, well, I do lend my assistance to the rapid response COVID team. I do take calls for them, but I must say I'm not doing as much as other persons, other doctors, other nurses are doing. They're way more involved than I am. Um, how has it changed my life? Just the same way it would have changed the life of the rest of the country. I take the same precautions that I wish everyone else would take in terms of hygiene and wearing our face masks. That is our new normal for now. Um, in terms of my fear level, if I'm afraid or panic as everybody else, not so much because i realized that when we're afraid of things we tend to make more mistakes and more mishaps happen so i try to be relaxed i keep myself up to date on the facts whatever new information is out there i try to read about it and take everything into consideration do what is necessary to protect myself my colleagues my patients and my family of course yeah so basically that's it all right, thank you very much, Dr. Roshana. Uh, so we have a question. Ashiba, I realize um, John is here. John is a nurse currently doing his nursing training. And, um, you know, it's good when you have medical persons on the on the platform where they can, okay, you know, I'm going to answer you. So Ashiba wanted to know what is scoliosis of, um, and what can you do to help it? So I guess um, you guys can do maybe a little bit of elaboration for her, simplify the terms so that she can be a little clear on it. So what is scoliosis? So basically, if you look at the curvature of the back of someone who is normal, the top, it kind of, there's two different curvatures on the top and the bottom, and it curves from back to front and front to back, right? In persons with scoliosis, it curves to the side, right? Mm -hmm. So this make it different. This, this curvature can cause a lot of pain. Um, the organs within the chest have to adapt to this shape. So it can cause difficulty breathing. It can cause heart problems. And in terms of what can be done is basically, number one, you try to recognize the risk of scoliosis in persons from childhood. Um, whether it be wearing your backpack. I had the backpack and the back pain issue. I had to stop carrying backpacks on my back because I was at risk for it. And I do have slight scoliosis. Um, so you try to recognize the risk and you try to prevent it. And then there are certain massages, certain physiotherapy that you can get done in terms of, to help you alleviate the pain and straighten up the spine a little. And that would depends, of course, at the stage of the scoliosis the person has. And then, of course, in first world countries, there's some amount of surgeries that can be done, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't do those here, right? So mostly is if you have scoliosis or think you have scoliosis, it's the 
see a physiotherapist that can help you to stage the disease and tell you what can be done because everything is patient by patient basis, right? Mm -hmm. So what can be done for you might not be necessarily what can be done for somebody else. Yeah. True. True. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Hira, you had anything to add to that? I think Doc covered it basically is the sideways curvature of the spine. Um, most most of the patients in the ortho clinic that we see come with scoliosis. Um, just to recognize it, some of the things that the parents or persons who are taking care of the children can notice is that they have um, uneven hips and uneven shoulders. Um, so the patient is actually sort of bended. Um, and one of those good, good exercises that we always recommend for those patients diagnosed with scoliosis, of course, it depends on what stage you have, is um, swimming. We encourage oh. the patients to do a lot of swimming. And um, these patients can also be offered a brace. They go to the Tullamarine and, and um, they fit them for a brace. But it's, of course, this is specific to... Um, the patients, they need to come in, we need to examine, we need to evaluate, and then we can offer appropriate advice. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, doctors, when you think that your time is up, um, persons are sending questions. So I think Doc, that Jeremiah wants, um, perhaps want to hear Dr. Roshana's voice again. Um, <laughs> um, so the question you would have asked to the honorable doctors, well, of course, you know, Dr. Hira, you're not exempted from this. Please spread some light on systematic carriers when it comes to COVID-19. And I wonder why Guyanese is not wearing their mask, by the way. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, there's just a, a thought that just came by. It's like you're seeing pictures and everybody's like, you know, I can remember the first time when I went into, well, since COVID was launched and school closed and everything was online for us. I went out sometime, I think in April for the first time, and it felt so strange walking in Trinidad on the roads and everyone with a mask on. I felt like I'm like, no nah, boy, I can't do this. And I tried to avoid the road as much as possible. Luckily, we had persons calling, what you guys need? So for me, my groceries used to be coming. So I hardly used to be going out on the road. It's only now you see people not really wearing masks now. But then when you look at Guyana, you see in pictures, I'm like, nah, this could never be real. Guyana case is rising and everybody just walking around as if COVID doesn't exist or they can't come. Anyway, doctors, yes, could you please address this wonderful um, question asked by Jeremiah Trim? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what he means by systematic carriers. Maybe he means asymptomatic. Jeremiah, Andrew, I think that's what, what he means, asymptomatic. Asymptomatic, okay. All right. So asymptomatic carriers. Basically, we know that, well, I think WHO would have made a, uh, a statement like a month or two ago saying that it's not correct to say asymptomatic carriers but pre-symptomatic carriers because most patients do develop symptoms at some point in time um, we know generally the incubation period is two to 14 days mm -hmm. so what is the incubation period the incubation period is just basically the time that it takes your body to show manifestations of the illness so it means that on day one you come in contact with patient x who has covid you can take two or up to 14 days to start showing symptoms of COVID. It means that you can be normal up to day 13, and then on day 13, you start experiencing symptoms. Mm -hmm. But before day 13, you could have been transmitting the disease to other persons. And that is why we say, for me, I try to tell persons, act as if everyone has covid yeah, yeah act as if you do not want to give covid to anyone hmm. and hmm. that is a good way of controlling the illness because if we don't believe it's there we wouldn't do what is necessary we wouldn't take the necessary precautions if if you are told that x person everyone is everybody is caught up in knowing 
how many cases are here, how many cases are there. They want to know who has it. They want to know the name of the person that have it. And I'm saying that does not benefit us. Why? Because if we know that patient Y was diagnosed with COVID, we're going to avoid patient Y. That's very good. But what about the other undiagnosed persons? True. True. Those are the persons we get it from. How many cases do we have now where the persons don't know where they would have come in contact with COVID? Mm. A lot of mm. persons do not know where. If you hear someone coughs, you, they're jumping from side to side. But from simple speaking, we can yeah. transmit yeah. this virus unknowingly. So if we are to have the mindset that every single person we come into contact with have the disease already, we will take the necessary precautions. We would keep the three feet to six feet distance. We would wear our face masks. We would practice hand hygiene. We would do everything that we are being told to do. But it's only because we cannot see it. Well, we think that the risk is not there. But we cannot see the virus. We cannot see it. So it's best to just know that, know for a fact that they are asymptomatic persons. They are a lot of persons out there who are transmitting the disease and unknowingly. There are a lot of persons who are becoming infected and not knowing who were their source of infection. So in light of that, it's best for us to take our necessary precaution with every single person we come into contact with because we do not know what their status is nor the status of the persons they would have been in contact with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said, Doc. Thank you. Dr. Hidar? No, Doc did it justice. I don't need to add. Okay, great. All right, good. So seeing that we have no more questions from the audience, I'm going to give my final question to you guys today. And um, my final question is simple. What is the best remedy or perhaps remedies for persons who are facing various personal health? I know we would have talked about it. We would have generalized. What are some, you know, some go-to tips that persons can use if they are experiencing health issues? all right doc you want to go or you want me to go okay i'm going to give one which is my favorite one okay um whatever illness it is no matter what it is from simple to complicated i always tell my patients it's best for you to know the illness mm -hmm. all right if you're newly diagnosed with someone if you have a family member diagnosed with someone read on it you come to the hospital sometimes we're busy but try you can still try asking us questions and we try our best to answer questions so the no the more you know about your illness is the the better for you right because you'll be able to recognize complications early you will know when to seek medical attention you would know what is good and what is not necessarily so good for you you would know what medications can go together. I actually appreciate the patient that comes to me and questions me on medications as compared to the patient that doesn't even know the names of the medications that they're taking, mm -hmm. right? So I feel that our population, that's the fundamental that's lacking as compared to Cuba where I studied if you have a hypertensive patient, we have 70-year-old, 80-year-old in Cuba who are taking 10, 15 different medications. They know them by name. They know them by dosage. They know everything about what they're taking. And mm. then we have persons in Ghana who would come to the hospital. They're on one single medication, and they can't tell you the name. We still refer to medication as red tablet, the white, wrong, square <laughs> tablet. So Get for me, <laughs> I would just love for us to get past that you know increase our our awareness to be much yeah. more educated in terms of that as a population just to know our illnesses thank you very much 
I am just laughing because I hate medication so much. So it's like getting to learn them is like that's the worst thing ever. So it's like when you see anybody asking, it's like, what, what medication are you taking? Or what did the doctor give you? Oh, that is a little white tablet, you know? So <laughs> I'm so guilty. But I thank God that I haven't been, um, I have, I had to use medication in a while. So I'm grateful for that. Go, Dr. Hidar. Shibiki, Doc was speaking directly to you. <laughs> um, you know, the last time when I was closing the program, I gave a testimony about my dad. Um, today, I want to say that in my family, in my household, in the house that I live in, I have so many sick persons. Um, my mom, she had one stroke last two years. Wow. My uncle who lives with us had two strokes. They both suffer from chronic illnesses. And um, my dad, of course, have some pains here and there. So I live in a house with a lot of sick uh, people who often need uh, adequate care. Um, I also alluded last week to the New START um, acronym. And that's why I'm so excited to have the opportunity to share it this week with our <laughs> listeners. Uh, you know, I love my acronyms. You know, I love my acronyms. And today to close the program, I'm going to share um, the best remedy for anybody is real new start. It's a real new start. So for the R today, we're going to say that you need to realize that you have a problem. Hmm. Um, when you realize that you have a problem, only then can you search for solutions. The hmm. E would be to educate yourself. And Doc was speaking all about this. You need to know about your problems, know how it's to be treated, um, what are signs you should look for, and then you should explore for positive avenues of change. And mm. the A in the real will be to address the problems, and L will be lean and practice the new start every day. So for new start, the new means nutrition. Of course, we have to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, um, we need to cut back on the meat and the snacks. Um, the E means to exercise. Daily should be exercise at least 20 to 30 minutes of exercising. Yeah. We've become so much of couch potatoes. We need to change that if we want to take our health back. Um, the W means water. We are to drink clean um, water, at least 8 to 12 glasses each day um this not only helps to quench your thirst of course but it helps with kidney functions and all of these um cleansing the entire body the s is a sleep a lot of people might be so excited to hear that they must sleep um, <laughs> but remember that we're not to oversleep we are to get at least eight hours of sleep every night you know pastor shibiki ellen white um in the ministry of healing told us that when we sleep before 12 o'clock, every hour we sleep before 12 o'clock, um, it registers in our, as to our body as if we had had two hours of sleep. So, mm -hmm. of course, catching sleep before 12 o'clock, young people, is very important, right? I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the T in New Start, we are at the T now, that's for temperance. In everything we do, we should have moderation. Um, yeah. We want to ensure also that you don't smoke and drink alcoholic beverages. Uh, be temperate individuals. The A in New Start is for air. You want to ensure that you breathe in and out clean and fresh air. The best time to do this, I'm told, um, is in the mornings yeah, when definitely. the air is clean and fresh. Also, one of the best places that I have found in Guyana to do this is by the Georgetown Sea Walls because you're having the clean ocean breeze. Um, not many factory smoke is coming from that side. So that's mm -hmm. one of the best air to breathe in and out. Um, the air is for rest. You don't want to overwork yourself. Um, we know we get busy with our jobs and everything, but there's sometimes you must shut down the computers and give your eyes rest. You must give your feet rest. Sit down, have a sit from um, time to time. 
uh, just ensure you catch up on your rest. And finally, the last thing in New Start is to have trust in God. Oh, yes. You know, um, the Bible tells us that above all, God wishes that we prosper and be in good health, just yeah. as our soul prospered. So mm -hmm. hold God to his promises and something great is going to happen in your life. Remember in the upcoming week and as you proceed along life's journey to practice the real new start and your health is going to take a change. Thank you so much, Dr. Hidar. So folks, that brings us to the end of our program of personal health uh, feature for today. I am so happy that we had Dr. Roshan Squires. She is, um, well, classmate, grade mates. I don't, I think grade mates might be a better term to put it. We were in different levels in the well, same same grade, but different classes. And then finally, when we reached into fourth form, of course, she went into science and I went into arts, more of the exploration until, yes, we walked that stage in 2008. I'm so happy today's the first time I'm actually seeing Dr. Squires in terms of like in person, I mean, besides pictures on Facebook, but like in person, in video, on video chat, is the first time I'm seeing her back in about 12 years. So. I really and truly, it was such a great privilege to meet you back, Roshano. And of course, we have Dr. Andre Edar. He came last week with us and he was so happy to return again today. And I'm so happy that you would have taken the time out to be here. And I just want to encourage our viewers once again to share this to your Facebook page um, to persons you don't know who may need it, who may need the encouragement during this period of time. Um, I want to let you know to subscribe to my YouTube channel also. Um, issues in focus with Shibiki. Same same page name, so you don't have to worry. It's, you can find it easy. Um, just look at one of the video. You can subscribe. You can like. You can share to others. I am working to reach a thousand subscribers because there's some benefits that comes from it. And um, so at the end of the day, we can strengthen what we have going on here. So thank you so much, Docs. I don't know if you have any one sentence, one line you want to say to our audience today before I officially end this live. All right, thank you, Shibiki, for having me, Dr. Roshan. It was nice being on the panel with you. To all our viewers, thanks for listening. We hope that you make an effort to change um, all the bad habits that we, uh, <laughs> I we like enjoy that from time to time. <laughs> um, let's continue to work to eradicate the health monsters that exist in our lives. All right, great. So I must say thank you for having me. It was a pleasure being here indeed. Um, to everyone, I would just like to say we are our brother's keepers. Um, don't just, especially in this pandemic, it's not it's not efficient to say or to point out other people's mistakes and just laugh at them. And, you yeah. know, it, it helps if we correct each other in a polite manner. If someone isn't wearing their mask correctly, you can show book. You don't need to go on different platform and try to embarrass individuals who are not doing the correct thing. It benefits no one instead of in the positive so that you can make a change. I love that. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. So as usual, we're just gonna pray to close today. Let's pray. Great God and eternal Father, we are thankful for the wisdom, the knowledge that you would have bestowed on both uh, Dr. Roshana and Dr. Andre. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them. I love the passion that they have for medicine, for as being medical practitioners. I pray that you continue to strengthen them in this field so that they can constantly be an encourager to others. Have your way and continue to bless our viewers in a special way. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So God bless you all. I'm going to see you again on Wednesday. And viewers, by the way, please note that our topic for Wednesday is the best sex ever. So if you want to know what is the best sex ever or when to have the best sex ever, you just need to come. You need to view, share the broadcast, especially to our young audience. We really need them on board on Wednesday. Same time, there's a panel already set waiting and ready to deliver on wednesday so i'm gonna see you then don't forget to like um this video share it to your page subscribe on my youtube channel so i'm gonna see you again next time bye bye docs 
do have a wonderful rest of the day see you god see you guys later